Hey y'all, Coach Jennifer here, guys. Stay with me. Hey y'all. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about the Morning Star. Okay. This is our second class on the Morning Star, mm -hmm. which promises to be a better class than the last one for several reasons. Okay. One is, should I say Stacy's awake, so to speak? I wasn't asleep the last time. Well, that's what you said. I said I sounded oh, okay. sleepy. Okay. I wasn't sleepy. It wasn't midday. Okay. And she's way more comfortable than she was in the last video. Even more familiar, or should I say, educated on the subject. I'm not more comfortable because I'm cold. <laughs> no, my special. Mm -mm. No. And. This is our second time going through this particular class. Because somebody lost the first one. I don't know who. <clears throat> anyway. We gotta start all over. Don't make it so long. Don't you going all for a long time. No, we're not gonna make it that long. What we're gonna <laughs> do in this one is we're just gonna read the verses that have the word light. Okay. Now, to catch you guys up that didn't get the opportunity to see the first video, what Stacy and I did, Sister Ann, what Sister and I, um, what Stacy and I did was we went through and looked at the Hebrew for the words used for the morning star or dawn versus just regular morning early time, mm -hmm. and highlighted the ones that talked about the day the dawn right. as in the morning star dawn and so in this video we plan to do the same thing but from the new testament now there are um quite a few more verses in the new testament that talks about the morning star so even this part will have to be in parts what we'll do in this first part or this um uh, Part one of, or should I say, part one of video two is just look at the verses up until the book of Acts. Okay. So that'll be kind of like the story because Acts is really a part of the Gospels. It's kind of like Joshua is a part of the Torah. Okay. All right. So now where we're looking at here is 2 Peter 1 and 19. Stacey, you want to read it from the Names of God translation? Verse 19. So we regard the words of the prophets as confirmed beyond all doubt. You're doing well by paying attention to their words. Continue to pay attention as you would a light that shines in a dark place as you wait for day to come and the morning star to rise in your hearts. All right, so here we see the morning star. Now, if we look at 2 Peter in the interlinear, we see that this word morning star is coming from this word that looks like flower source. Phosphorus? Mm -hmm. So if we look at the word itself and look closely at the word, we see that it comes from this word here, which looks like fos or fawasa, which its definition is light. Usage is light light source of light radiance now my point is is that this is the word used for the morning star or the, the what the word comes from and when we look at it it has 73 different hits as far as 73 different occurrences as far as when that word is used opposed to the one for phosphorus or phosphorus is only a one occurrence. Right. So they've taken this word from the source, which creates a disconnect between us and our understanding of what the morning star is. Okay. And so you don't realize you're talking about the same thing. So if we look at Fawasa, we start to see verses that talk about a great light, how we are the light, let, let the light shine. So we're talking about a different kind of light. 
So when we put those verses in chronological order and pull out some of the context, we can start to get an understanding of what the morning star is from a New Testament perspective. But like we said, we're only going to go through the book of Acts, Father willing, in this video. Okay. So you want to read the word there that has the word light in it? This is Luke 2, 29 through 32, and we'll start at 32, where it says, He is a light that will reveal salvation to the nations and bring glory to your people, Israel. Now, who is this? This is Simon talking to Mary and Joseph when they bought the Messiah as a uh, young child into the temple. So this is Simon saying that the Messiah is the light? Right. Now, again, the significance of this is this is the light source used for the word morning star like we saw in the Old Testament so let's look at John chapter 1 verse 4 through 9 for the word light he was the source of life and that life was the light for humanity the light shines in the dark and the dark has never extinguished it God sent a man named John to be his messenger John came to declare the truth about the light so that everyone would become believers through his message. John was not the light, but he came to declare the truth about the light. The real light, which shines on everyone, was coming into the world. Okay. Talking about the light. Right. And we talked about that. You got something? No, I was just saying throughout each one of those verses, four verses, is definitely pointing to the Messiah okay. as, as being the, the light. To be in the light, and what we learned in the Old Testament version of this class was that there are multiple sons of light. Mm -hmm. But what we see in Revelation, he says that he is the light. Right. All right. Let's look at John chapter five, verse thirty-five. John was a lamp that gave off brilliant light. For a time, you enjoyed the pleasure of his light. This is talking about John Baptist. Yeah, and this is the Messiah speaking about right. John the Baptist, saying that he was a lamp. Mm -hmm. Okay. That gave off light. That's that's kind of significant because, um, I guess the saying that he was a bearer of the light. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. hey, and which we all are supposed to be like that, right. because if you think about what he did, was he just praised the name of our Father in heaven. Yeah, gave him the credit, um, recognized and acknowledged that he was the light. Yahweh Messiah, Yahweh Shawan. All right, the next one up is in John chapter 3. Starting at verse 19, it says, This is why people are condemned. The light came into the world, yet people love the dark rather than the light because their actions were evil. People who do what is wrong hate the light and don't come to the light. They don't want their actions to be exposed. But people who do what is true come to the light so that the things they do for God may be clearly seen. So the light has come into the world. He is the light. Right. He's come into the world approximately 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. But we love the dark. Right. We love sin, in other words, rather than the light because our actions were evil. So now... As a math guy, I start to you know do the calculating on it. So you're saying our actions are evil first, and then you start to love the dark. That's kind of counterintuitive. Hmm. But then it clears it up next and says, people who do what is wrong hate the light and don't come to the light. So they're rejecting the light. Right. They don't want to see the light. Hmm. It says, because they don't want their actions exposed. Hmm. But people who do what is true come to the light so that the things they do for God may be clearly seen. All right, the next one is down in John 8 and 12. Yeshua spoke to the Pharisees again. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have a life filled with light and will never live in the dark. So here's the Messiah saying that he is the light. Yeah. 
He is the light. Right. Not a light. Whoever follows him will have a life filled with light. So you have to follow him. But he says he's the light. Mm -hmm. Now that's significant when you start to think about star constellations and timing and feast days. Because the so-called three-dimensional morning star, which is a wandering star, is falling on or around feast days or other significant days within the holy year, the Enochian year. And so in other words, there's some times in the year when people will actually have to go to the light. In other words, three-dimensionally. Mm -hmm. Like wake up, maybe even go outside. Mm -hmm. I was thinking on why tabernacles and the evening star coincided this year. Mm -hmm. Well, because you would be in the tabernacle outside or you'd be out by the fire outside, but you're outside, outside during the time of the evening star, during a feast day, feast week. Mm -hmm. In the previous year, you was doing the morning star during that same feast week. And the next time you see it will be doing around Passover or the spring feast, feast week. Okay. All right, the next one we see is in John chapter 9, verse 5. As long as I'm in the world, I'm light for the world. As long as he's in the world, he's light for the world. Now, this should bring to mind how he said he had to leave in order for the comforter to come. Right. Because then we are all can partake in the light like John the Baptist did. Mm -hmm. See, John the Baptist had something special. He was one of the ones who basically had the light from birth. Right. There was very few mentioned in the Bible like that. Um, that had the, who was that, Sam, Samuel? That's what I was thinking, Samuel. Um, maybe um, Samson. Mm -hmm. Maybe Joseph. Not mm -hmm. Joseph, but Jacob. Yeah. Um, just different ones. They had it on from birth. Right. The other ones had to go get it. Mm -hmm. Or had to come to them. You know, mm -hmm. Like Abraham. So as long as he was here, he was the light. But after he went away, now we all can partake in the light. So now we see the next verse here. We're in chronological order. So we'll jump back to Matthew chapter 4 and find the word light. So 16 says, the people who lived in darkness have seen a bright light. A light has risen for those who live in a land overshadowed by death. It's talking about the nature of the three-dimensional morning star and how it rises periodically. It's on like a five-year cycle. Hmm. Hmm. Um. I could, I could pull up a picture of of how, my fact, let me, I'll show you what I mean. That has pattern looks like that. I could draw that to make it look like that. But it's on a five year cycle where it comes around every so every five years, comes back to the same spot. So in other words, these people living in darkness are waiting for this. It's a time of spiritual renewal. It's a time of new beginnings for everybody. Right. And so these people overshadowed by death, especially ones that understand this and, you know, are just coming into the knowledge recently, they're actually waiting on this. Mm -hmm. You know, and those who don't have a calendar, a good calendar, will be looking up at the, the uh, eastern sky in the morning a lot, just looking to wait to see the morning star right. before dawn. But we'll talk about the time when it arrives. We already did, but we'll give a more detailed video in future father willing father willing all right let's look at matthew chapter five you are light for the world a city cannot be hidden when it is located on a hill no one lights a lamp and put it under a basket instead everyone who lights a lamp put it on a lamp's hand then its light shines on everyone in the house in the same way let your light shine in front of people then they will see the good that you do and praise the father in heaven Talking about the church as a whole, right? Right. When he says, mm -hmm. "When he says you are the light," right. So we are the light, right. But then it's saying that no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, everyone who lights a lamp puts it on a lampstand. Meaning, the purpose of us having this light in the first place 
wants to shine. That's the mm -hmm. only reason why we give it to us. Mm -hmm. Now, we see the purpose of this. The reason why we do this, the reason why we let our light shine is so that they will see his good. So that, that you know, so they will see the Messiah in us. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to praise him. Right. And then once they start to praise them, then their light will at least start to dry out. Mm -hmm. And then it can be lit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let's look at Luke. No one lights a lamp and hides it under a bowl or puts it under a bed. Instead, everyone who lights a lamp put it on a lampstand so that those who come in will see the light. Okay, so. This once again talks about having our light um, that is out in the open so that everybody can see it. Talking about good works, charity. Mm -hmm. Now we're in chapter 11, verse 33 through 35. See the word light? Yeah, this once again talks about the lamp, the lamp and the light on the lampstand. Okay. Same story. Like we said, we are in chronological order here. So we jump to Luke 12 and 3. Whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight. Whatever you have whispered in private rooms will be shouted from the housetops. All right. So this could be speaking of that time like we saw earlier where you had people in the shadow of darkness or the shadow of death for waiting for this light. Mm -hmm. So once they've gone through this period of trial, this period of, of testing, this right. period of this tribulation period, so to speak. Now, once the world comes into the light. You got to understand, it's, it's an individual thing, but it's also a global thing. Right. The whole world is going to come to this light at one point. It's what he means by every knee, every eye shall see this light. It's just going to be so bright that you're just not going to be able to miss it. Even the blind people will see it. He's saying then to give your testimony, hmm. to tell what you know, because there are people who are early in this thing. And one of their main responsibilities will be to help those that are not so early. Right. Matthew 10, 27. Tell in the daylight what I say to you in the dark. Shout from the housetops what you have whispered. Once again, talking about a dark period that the world uh, maybe is in right now. But when you come over to the light, like you said, you'll be able to tell others about it. Yeah, because what you think about it, if you try to tell them in the dark time, mm -hmm. yeah. even if they are in trouble, they, they're, they're, it'll be hard to focus on such simple stuff when they're in such complex problems. Luke 16 and 8. The master praised the dishonest manager for being so clever. Worldly people are more clever than spiritual-minded people when it comes to dealing with others. I don't see light in there. Yeah, we got to go to a different translation to right. see the word light. You want to read it for which translation you want to read it from? The Common English Bible? The master commended the dishonest manager because he acted cleverly. People who belong to this world are more clever in dealing with their prayers than are people who belong to the light. Have you noticed that? Yeah. And people, well, it tells us to let people take advantage of us. That's what we learned first with reading the book of Matthew. Mm -hmm. Let people hit you. We at least appear to be that way. You know, as we actually aspire to actually become that way. All right. All right. All right. Now, so let's look at Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 3. Verse 2. Yeshua's appearance changed in front of them. His face became as bright as the sun and his clothes as white as light. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared to them and were talking with Yeshua. So this is the transfiguration mm -hmm. on Mount Tabor. Right. But notice this light. This is the, not just a regular old light. Mm -hmm. This is the morning star light. Mm -hmm. All right. And let's look at Mark 15, 54. Peter followed him at a distance and went into the chief priest's courtyard. He sat with the guards and warmed himself facing the glow of a fire. Now here, the word fire is the light. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And But when you look in the concordance for fire, and so it's 442, Strong's 442. Mm -hmm. So that's not the kind of fire we're talking about, not the kind of light we're talking about. 
when you look at Mark 14, 54 in an interlinear, you see this fire that he was warming himself by was the morning star. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it, the morning star would have, it was in the sky at that time. And so all it means is that they were out there praying, yeah. being out there in it. Like you, you know, just out there under the morning star, letting it shine on you as if you were star bathing. Yeah. And we know that, you know, it was about this time, uh, simply because of the, um, the way that the rooster crows. Yeah, he crows around that yeah. time almost every morning. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, every morning. <laughs> he wakes us up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an alarm clock. All right, the next time we see the word light is Luke twenty two fifty six. A female servant saw him as he sat facing the glow of the fire. She stared at him and said, this man was with Yahshua. Okay, so now this lady, this servant. Now, let's go to a different translation of this. You see in the King, oh, the KJ 21, it says a certain maid. Mm -hmm. And that's significant. We'll see when we get to the book of Acts because it's going to be this, probably the same certain maid that's going to keep calling them out. But again, that word fire is going to be the fullest for morning star. But anyway, let's look at John chapter 11, 9 through 10. Yeshua answered, Aren't there 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day don't stumble because they see the light of this world. However, those who walk at night stumble because they have no light in themselves. But anyway, again, y'all help us out in the comment section because it's talking about a different kind of light there. Let's drop down to John chapter 12, 35 through 46. Yeshua answered the crowd, the light will still be with you for a little while. Walk while you have light so that darkness won't defeat you. Those who walk in the dark don't know where they're going. While you have the light, believe in the light so that you will become people whose lives show the light. And this can have multiple meanings because we've already saw that the morning star was in the sky during that time. Mm -hmm. Or at least during some of these time periods. Right. And, you know, but... He's also talking about himself, too, mm. how you have him there now. And when he goes away, you know, you can imagine those who rejected him then, how they would have done after he would have left. Well, it's the same as now. When yeah. we reject him, you know, our life definitely, sometimes it might not appear, but when you get down to it, it's definitely full of darkness. Mm. So he's saying while he had him, just like us now, while we have mm -hmm. the opportunity, because even the scripture is supposed to go away. Mm -hmm. It tells us that you know, we're along for the day that we used to be able to read his word, you know, after it's you know, been washed away in the flood and the earthquake or whatever. Um, same, same. You know, yeah. Those who walk in the light now will have the light later, but those that are walking in darkness now will be in a perpetual darkness or something like that. Yeah, the only thing that, you know, we promise that will be around is uh, love, which never fails. But it definitely talks about how everything else will go away and will fail. And there's more to do with the light down there in about verse 46. It says, I am the light that has come into the world so that everyone who believes in me will not live in the dark. And that's the change that the Messiah brought to the world was mm -hmm. he brought the light. Mm -hmm. You know, John the Baptist was born with the light like we talked about. Right. But with the Messiah, we all get to be partakers in this light, both receiving and um, radiating. We're going to find out. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6, 22 through 23. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is unclouded, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is evil, your whole body will be full of darkness. If the light in you is darkness, how dark it will be. So it's talking about us as the light, mm -hmm. but saying how some of us get to be a dark light if the light that is in us be darkness. Mm -hmm. So now, of course, this could be talking about transgressions of laws and such, but this is also going to be talking about just merely missing the uh, morning star because, like we said, it's been falling on or around feast days, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But we'll talk about that in another video. All right, so now that takes us through the end of the Gospels, but let's look in Acts because this is part of the story. 
Acts 9 and 3, as Saul was coming near the city of Damascus, a light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. Now, we see this here in Acts 9 and 3, when it's talking about this light. Again, this light here being this phoas. Mm -hmm. And so it's talking about the morning star is what actually shined on his face there. And you see the same thing in Acts 22. Mm -hmm. But as I was on my way and approaching the city of Damascus about noon, a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around me. So this is saying around about noon. The morning star is still up there at that time. It's just being buffered out by the sun. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to catch it at dawn. Because once the sun comes up, it still could be up there, but you didn't miss it. You can't tell. Mm -hmm. Can you see anything up there now? You don't know what's up there. Right. And so that's the thing about dawn and, you know, why the Bible, you know, speaks of dawn. But that is very significant that it came about him at noon. All right. You see another time that the word light is used down there in verse 11. Oh, verse 9 says, the men who were with me saw that light, but didn't understand what the person who was speaking to me said. Because it was a different kind of light. Mm. They saw it, but they didn't understand it. And verse 11 says, I was blinded because the light was had been so bright. So the men who were with me led me into the city of Damascus. So why didn't it blind them? Hmm. Hmm. All right, let's look at Acts 26, 13 through 23. Your majesty, at noon, while I was traveling, I saw a light that was brighter than the sun. The light came from the sky and shined around me and those who were with me. Now, so this once again talking about the light uh, that Paul saw on his way, way, you know, into the city, the light that blinded him. And that's, that's definitely interesting what you said, you know, if it was a bright, bright, you know, a bright light that when we think of material, uh, why didn't it blind the other one? Because it said that they did see the light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, look down here, same passage, the same chapter down. You see the word light down in about verse 18. It says, you will open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light. And from Satan's control to God's. So this is his instruction that he's getting from our master. For the Gentiles. Right. So so this, so this, the light has blinded him. Mm -hmm. And now he's been instructed to shine this same light on others. At least it's the same word. The, the same mm -hmm. um, Greek word. Mm -hmm. And then you see it again down in about verse 23. They said that the Messiah would suffer... And be the first to come back to life and would spread light to Jewish and non-Jewish people. So again, using this same Greek word, fawasa. Let's go to Acts 12, 6 through 7. 7 says, Suddenly an angel from the Lord stood near Peter, and his cell was filled with light. So this is talking about when Peter was um, in prison, shackled. Yeah. Yeah, and like we talked about in the last class, this particular one comes with an angelic visitation. Right. You see, it says the angel nudged Peter's side, woke him up, and said, hurry, get up. At that moment, the chains fell off from Peter's hands. So here's the light coming in. Right. And up in 6, it says, the night before Herod was going to bring Peter to trial, uh, Peter was sleeping between his two soldiers. So we know that this was uh, at night, and if it was, if we're uh, referring it to the morning star, it could definitely be when dawn was about to come in. Opposed to the evening star. Right. All right. Now Acts thirteen verse forty-seven. Forty-seven says, "The Lord gave us the following orders: I have made you a light for the nations." So that you would save people all over the world. Let's start again talking about us as the light. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the first instructions given to the servants. Then in Acts 16, 25 through 29, the word of light is in there somewhere. You see it? Oh, uh, that deals with verse 29 when the jailer asked for torches 
and rushed into the jail, he was trembling as he knelt in front of Paul and Silas. And that's very interesting because this word torches is the same word. Mm. Matter of fact, let's look at it. It says, having called now for lights. Mm. And when we look for this word call, it's the ask, request, petition, mm. or demand. Mm -hmm. And in the last video that you know got corrupted or whatever, we talked about how this could be prayer. Yeah. And how he was simply praying for a light. Yeah, because prayer is only a petition, right? Making and, a request. And so looking for that after praying for light, mm -hmm. which rushed in, mm -hmm. he became terrified. I think I'll become terrified too. <laughs> yeah, of course, you know. <laughs> it, you know, he's a Gentile guard. <laughs> You know? I don't care if the Israel God. I think I would have been terrified still. And and so now he goes in and smartly falls before Paul inside his feet, who would have had some instruction for him what to do. Right. Paul recognizing this light would have not been terrified. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He's giving instructions on that. He's he's the head instructor mm -hmm. on the on you know light, and here's a, his first Gentile <laughs> convert. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And that takes us to the end of Acts. Right. Or and or the end of the Gospels, mm -hmm. including Acts. Right. And so in the next video we'll pick up on the verses from Paul and the rest of the mm -hmm. New Testament. And so if you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way and shalom. Shalom.